Welcome to the Monday, May 16th, 2022 meeting of the Montpelier Design Review Committee. We'll let members and staff introduce themselves. Go ahead, Eric. There we go. <laughs> Benjamin Cheney, member. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett, member. Martha Smirsky, member. We don't have Liz on. Okay, so Martha is the only one remote? Yep, is the only member remote. Okay. At this point, we'll let Meredith review the remote meeting procedures. In just a minute. Sorry, just emailing somebody who we're hoping to get on the meeting. Alrighty. So I am gonna be sharing, my, oh, there she is. Uh, I'm gonna be, sharing my screen this is more for um oop. recording in progress there we go this is going to be more for people who are watching via orca media and might want to sign on but there are some little tidbits about how we do this hybrid meeting procedures in here for everybody on right now as well so All right. So for those of you viewing this design review committee meeting tonight via Orca Media, you can participate in the meeting via the Zoom platform through the video link here that you can paste into your web browser or by calling into this phone number and using this passcode. Uh, oh, uh, if nobody can see that. Hold on one second, I gotta fix the other screen. Thank you, Andrew. Um, if anyone has problems accessing the meeting, please email me. My email address is right here on your screen. Um, and I will be reviewing, keeping an eye on my email throughout the meeting. So if you do have problems, I can try and walk you through getting in. For those attending via Zoom, turning on your video is optional. For everyone attending, please keep your microphone on mute when you're not speaking. This will reduce background noise for everybody participating. The Zoom chat function should only be used for troubleshooting or logistics questions. If you have a question or comment about an item on the agenda, please raise your hand. So far tonight, all we have on is applicants. Um, so my guess is we won't have to worry about any of that, but just keep it in mind. In the event the public is unable to access this meeting and I would find out via email, then it will need to be continued to a time and place certain. I will now hand the meeting back over to the chair. Unless anybody has anything else to add at this time, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda. Also here second. <laughs> All in favor of the agenda, speak your names. Martha. Ben and Steve. Eric, could you pull your microphone closer to you? Thank you. Okay, we can go to the first application for 89 State Street, Vermont Mutual Insurance, placement of a tent. Is someone here from Vermont Mutual? Yes, yes Stephen. Hi, uh, Brody Gilbert with Vermont Mutual. Uh, thanks for taking the time to consider the uh, the application we put forth. Um, we are in the process of fully opening or reopening our offices after being shut down for the last two years. Um, and uh, we're looking to have a temporary outdoor space as we transition folks back into the office, just given there's a fair amount of uncertainty and some unease, uh, generally speaking, about kind of being in close quarters, whether it's eating or in situations where folks can't socially distance. So we're just looking for a temporary space for this this summer to have a outdoor meeting space and a place for you know lunch. Um, um, so that's that's what we're putting forth as an application for the for a small tent, uh, 600 square feet in the back of uh, of the building on 89th State. It's not visible from State Street. Um, it's clearly visible from court. Uh, 
uh, given that that parking lot in the back of us is, is wide open. So. Okay, do any of the committee members have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding the tent? No, not me. And again, it's placed temporarily between Correct. June and the end of September. Correct. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, we can run down through the criteria. I will read through the uh, each of the criteria. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing building shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. That's acceptable. Respect the use of the State House Dome, acceptable. Certainly does not interfere with any views of the State House. Architectural features. Architectural features including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, other forms of molding or character defining detailing prevailing on the existing building shall be considered in any alteration. Uh, that's acceptable. And lastly, landscaping, screening, and site furnishings. Projects within the re design review district and subject to landscaping requirements shall be shall consider the following site furnishings including fencing seating other types of site furniture visible from the street or side yards and in this location is certainly acceptable and accessory buildings or structures new accessory buildings or structures shall be located within either the side yard or rear yard and shall not visually disrupt the streetscape or affect the integrity of the existing building or proposed new building acceptable all in favor of the application as presented, speak your names. Ben. This is Martha, I say yes. And Steve says yes. So it's passed in favor four to none in favor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Describe the next yeah. step. So Brody, um, because this requires a minor site plan review as well, Audra and I just need to do up a quick like mini memo that goes along with this. So okay. it might be a couple of days before you get the permit. Um, just we okay. to put it in queue, but we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Great. Awesome. Sorry, my area I signed above, so you'll have oh. to sign, you'll <laughs> He's, have to sign yeah, both it's places. When, <laughs> these days when people are remote, if you guys haven't made recommendations or optional changes, we it's typically aren't getting that second set signature. Okay. It just makes everything longer. So I signed for him. Yep, you signed for him. <laughs> Thanks, Brody. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Great. I can sign off. Thanks. You can sign off. You're all set. Perfect being first. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Thanks for the consideration. Bye. And goodbye. The next application is for 170 Main Street, the city of Montpelier, renovations to locker room, and including replacing an exterior door with a double hung window. Is someone here for the city representing the, I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> so just make sure you're speaking yep. into the microphone so All that right. people can get it. So what we're doing as you see in the images we've got an existing couple of locker rooms over at main street middle school we're converting those spaces into a student support space and what we're looking to do is we're going to retain one of the doors there's currently two doors out of locker rooms that'll be in one space talk to chris lumber he'd like to keep one of those doors which we will we're going to put a we do want to put a window in that just a in that flush door and then we'll take the other door out and infill the brick with a probably with a wood or a, a composite material we'll paint it red to match the brick and then we want to put a double hung window in that in that hole um, it'll be a similar character to the rest of the double hung windows in that in that wall uh, as a just as in clarity whether we're able to get a double hung window in there this summer i'm not 100 percent sure we're meeting with our contractor tomorrow but if if we are not able to do that what we probably what we'd like to do is just put a Put a window in that flush door until we can get a window and then install it but we, we want to make sure there's natural light in that space at the start of school but who knows how long it's going to take to get windows is the fiberglass like an integrity or yeah 
yeah. a Marvin or a, yeah. this. Yeah. What are the other windows on the side of the building? They're wood. They're wood? Yeah. Are they one over ones, pretty much? Uh, yes, I believe on that ed on that side, on that addition. It, it looks like it. Yeah. Again, do any of the members have any questions, comments, suggestions? Nobody's ever going to see this street, right? It's, it's uh, behind the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> Alongside the dumpster. <laughs> If, okay, then we can go through the criteria for this installation. Number one, exterior design and materials of new construction or alterations of existing buildings shall be consistent and compatible with the characteristics of the existing building or other properties in the district. The removal of historic, historic materials, uh, not really applicable other than the door, which is doesn't look like a uh, historic door by any <laughs> yeah. means. Character defining features, finishes, and construction techniques or examples of craftsmanship that characterize an historic building shall be preserved. Deteriorated character defining features shall be repaired rather than replaced. When the severity of a deterioration requires a replacement of a character defining feature, new features shall be replaced in kind. Any treatments that cause damage, none here. This is acceptable with the replacement of the door either with a window in the door, or it's certainly at this location, or uh, a window with an infill below is fine. Existing buildings shall be recognized as a physical record of their time, place, and use. Any new development shall be differentiated from the old and be compatible with massing size, scale, architectural features, detailing, and overall character of the primary historic building and nearby historic properties acceptable. Proportion, compatibility of relationship between width and height or facades, as well as relationship of width to height of windows and doors, acceptable. Rhythm, visual patterns established by the alterations of solid walls and openings, windows and doors, and the facade of a building shall create a rhythm. Patterns of solids and openings shall be preserved to the extent feasible, acceptable. Architectural features including but not limited to cornices, windows, shutters, fan lights, and tablature, trim, and other forms of molding or character-defining detailing prevailing on the existing building should be considered in the alteration, acceptable. And windows and doors on historic structures. Character-defining windows and door patterns, placements, sizes, proportions, and original features such as trim, sash, and molding shall be preserved to the extent possible. When preservation is not possible, such character-defining windows and doors must be rehabilitated or replaced in kind. Windows and doors that are not character-defining may be replaced, but such replacements must be compatible with the historic building style, materials, and architectural features. Acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Ben. This is Martha. I say yes. And Steve says yes. So it's passed four to nothing in favor. Since you're here, I'm going to ask you to sign it. Sure. I'll <laughs> sign in the right place since he's here. For... <laughs> the nice thing is, this is the site plan review, so it's really Just in that block on the left below my name. Yeah, just leave it on the table. That doesn't work. Oh, here. Oh, here. Huh. Oh, no, but just there's a, you can get this little weird little box. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Take care. Good luck with your ordering the window. Heads <laughs> <laughs> up the Bob Boy. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, goodbye. Next application is for 77 Main Street. Any family, Main Street LLC, Claire Benedict for Bear Pond Books regarding replacing an existing storefront sign. Someone here from Bear Pond? Yes, I'm here, Claire Benedict. Go ahead and describe your application for your new sign. 
We are replacing the existing sign with a 14-foot uh, sign of the same, which is the same size as the existing one, and it's just going to be an updated. Uh, it's going to say Bear Pond Books, and just like it says now, only in a newer, fresher look. Claire, you're also going with a different color. Is that true? Yes, it is uh, dark blue. The current sign is uh, a dark red mm -hmm. and with white lettering. And the new sign is going to be dark blue with um, off white lettering. Mm -hmm. OK. And, and a board. The same material? I'm sorry? Is it the same material? It is. Uh, I don't believe so, no. I think the old sign is wood. It's been up there for a very long time. I'm not sure what it is. The new f sign is um, a dye bond panel, uh, a foam frame around a dye bond panel. Okay. okay. And is the lettering about the same size as the existing one? Yes, it is. Um, there's going to be an addition of a little window, which is our, our new logo is going to be on there, um, which will be about the size of a, a letter to the left. And yeah, it'll, it's going to look, uh, yeah, it's going to be the same size as the old one. It's okay. very similar. OK, thank you. My, my only suggestion is to use the darkest blue that you're willing to go with for two reasons. Number one, the darker the blue goes, ni more ni goes nicely with the brick color of the building and also gives you more contrast and makes the sign more readable without having to enlarge any letters or make any change other than creating contrast. <sighs> The, um, yes, thank you for that idea. Um, the dark, the blue that we're using is actually is very dark. Um, the materials that I got from the, that you're looking at, I assume that you're looking at is um, not in the exact color that it's going to be ultimately is going to be a darker kind of like a midnight navy blue kind of yes. color. No, that would, that would be much nicer. If you, if you look at the, the banner, if the picture of your storefronts, if you look at the banner with the flags, that that's a very dark blue. And again, the darker the blue, the better it goes with the brick and the better contrast you get for readability. Yeah, I think I think you'll like it. <laughs> Any other comments, questions or suggestions from the. I'm good. OK. I can read through the criteria for science. The signs location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties acceptable. Where appropriate, signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands acceptable. If a building has multiple tenants, there shall be consistency in placement of size and size among all signs acceptable. It is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries, acceptable. Sign installations shall minimize damage to character defining materials of the building, acceptable. In masonry buildings, fasteners shall be in mortar joints. This one is being attached in a sign band, existing. Sign design, color, and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings, acceptable. Sign support structures shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the application, speak your names. Martha, did you vote in favor? Yes. Oh, okay. And I vote in favor as well. So it passes four to zero. Thank you. I'm doing it again. <laughs> so, uh, Claire, we'll get this out to you as soon as we can. There's no written recommendations on the form, so we don't need to get you to sign it. Um, and I 
I did double check and commercial awnings can be approved administratively. They don't need to go to the design review committee. Okay. So when you are ready to update that awning, as long as you keep that new and used books fit the same or get rid of it, we can approve the switch out of the awning color administratively. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much and good luck with your new installation of the sign. Thanks. We can move to the next application for 8 Bailey Avenue, the Vermont Land Trust applicant, Samuel Group, Steve Ertl, regarding replacement of existing signage. Is he's here? Yeah, right? Steve Ertl okay. is here remotely. Do you want to describe your application for us? Yes, please. Um, the Vermont Land Trust has uh, asked us to um, update their signage with their new logo. It's a horizontal logo, and uh, we're doing it in other locations also. Um, these Both of the signs we're applying for today are replacing existing ones, one on uh, the facade of the building, a small one next to the door, and then a freestanding sign out front. Um, as you can see later on in our proposal, I have the old sign in that near that snowbank and uh, the new sign kind of put on top of it. So you can see that the two signs will be located in the identical, uh, be in the identical location that it was before. It will have two posts. Um, and all the dimensions are on that um, application also as to how high and everything. The top of the sign will be uh, 72 inches. The top of the post, I should say, will be 72 inches and pretty low profile and pretty far away from the road there. Um, we're going to paint the post, the brown to match the border around their logo to try to not have uh, raw PT posts out there. Uh, the sign itself is also going to be wood at their request, uh, or a, a sustainable uh, recyclable material versus a PVC or something like that. Um, I believe that's about all I have. The new sign is, 11.8 square feet, the actual sign itself for the freestanding sign and the one on the building is 1.67 square feet. And how large is the existing freestanding sign? I believe it was six square feet. Okay. As you can see in that photo there, uh, the very last page of my application, it shows the existing signage that is there. Yes. And it's a huge post system with the smaller sign hanging from it. Yes. Do you intend to use the same post system? No. No, it'll be exactly like it is on, I believe, page three of the application. Let's see. On to page four and five. I can, I can pull it up on a screen share if you want, Martha. I think four, I've got it. Okay. Four, five, I and think six. I've got it. Yeah. So a six by six on either side, um, painted brown with a nice top cap to kind of uh, go along with the, the building's architecture mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay. Thank you. Is the lettering and and logo painted on the plywood? It's a uh, going to be digitally printed directly on the wood, and then we're going to put uh, a Matthews clear coat over the top of it to seal it in for longevity. Okay. We have the ability to just print right directly on the material.
even with the clear coat, if you were to put a primer on the MDO, would that allow you to print on the on the primer? The MDO ships uh, pre-primed. Oh, okay. Us, so it's primed two sides already. Oh, good. And then we run that through our printer, and and then we'll hit it with a clear coat or or multiple clear coats. If it's pre-primed, inquire if they can do a urethane primer, which lasts a lot longer than a standard primer. We, we've had some experience with those. <laughs> yeah, they were very interested in using something uh, recyclable, but trying to get as much life out of it as possible. So that I right. will uh, look there's into a, that. There's a, a urethane primer lasts about five times as long as a just a standard primer. At not much difference in cost. Great. And again, that doesn't af affect anything. It's just the, the type of material. It's a, a really good quality that lasts a long time. Any other comments, questions, or suggestions? Good. Okay, we can go through the criteria for this sign. The size, location, design, color, texture, lighting, and material of all exterior design, all exterior signs within the design review district shall be compatible with the building and structures of the site and surrounding properties. Acceptable. Is there any lighting on the sign? Uh, we are not installing any lighting, no. Okay. Just, just. And uh, there is non-existing okay no that's fine i was just curious if you were thinking of it where appropriate signing shall respect the original sign placement and sign bands on historic structures acceptable it is recommended that sign placement be centered over building entries this freestanding sign in front of the building is fine acceptable Sign installation shall minimize damage to character defining materials on the building and the, build, the sign on the building is acceptable as well. Sign design color and typography shall respect historic precedents where appropriate and shall be the appropriate scale for existing and new buildings acceptable. Sign support structure shall be compatible with the building architecture and must not be overly complex or dominant in and of themselves acceptable. All in favor of the proposed sign, speak your names. Eric. Ben. Martha, I'm a yes. And Steve says yes as well. Passes four to nothing in favor. Wanted to describe his next step. Um, so Steve, we will need to do a very quick administrative site plan just because of the um, ground sign. Right. To confirm the locations on that. Um, so it'll take a little bit longer than if we didn't have to do that, but we should be able to get this out pretty quick. Okay. Um, and, and are we sending, are we letting you know when it's ready or should we reach out to the Vermont Land Trust contact? Uh, directly to me. Okay. Uh, and I'll inform them as soon as you tell me. Uh, okay. Cause yeah, it'll need to be, get picked up and the blue notice card put on the property. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, send it to me, and we'll we'll get it okay. up there. So we'll we'll mail it to you. And will that administrative plan have um, a very specific distance from the road to that front post? Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. For that location. I was going to um, use the existing structure as my guide, but I'd rather have a real a solid number. Yeah, I think because I think that's on. Assuming that's on here. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll, um, we'll work. I'll, I'll email you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. I'll go through and make sure we have everything we need for the, cause we have to have the location for the administrative site plan. Um, and if Audra didn't get the exact distance, we'll need to check that. So, okay. Um, or at the very least there, there'll be a guidance about how close it can be. Our, our plan is to exactly where the old one is or further back so if i have a a number that would be great okay sounds good thanks so much thanks steve thank you very much and good luck with your project i guess we have um, no minutes uh yeah there was a long delay in getting them so okay. it, no, they, we didn't okay. have them by the time we had to send these out um we actually had somebody uh 
we have a Bethel who just signed on. May I ask? We, we just finished all of our applications, so I'm curious what you're on for. You'll need to unmute yourself if you want to talk. Okay. Uh, yeah, we don't have any minutes today. We'll bring those up the next meeting. Okay. Then our next meeting is June the 6th. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll second. All in favor of adjournment, speak your names. Aye. Ben. Martha. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much.